great to be here. I uh, want to thank uh, Donnie and Tony for the opportunity to talk to you guys. It's a, it's a pleasure. It's, it's an honor. Um, you know, obviously, um, you know, we've got some good players. Uh, my attitude is, you know, coaches don't win games, players win games, and that's something we try to sell to our kids is that, uh, you know, your attitude, guys, ought to be coaches call a dang defense and we're going to get them. I mean, and, that, and that's what you've got to get instilled in the kid's head. Now, you know uh, you've got to get the, them lined up right. You've got to coach them up, and you've got to get them uh, to where, you know, they're fundamentally sound and all those things. But when it comes right down, you want them thinking they're players. Well, they are or not, okay? Uh, you've got to get them to think they're players, and you've got to get them to play aggressive and play fast. And that's what I like about this offense because it teaches our guys how to play fast. If you don't, you're going to get left behind. And almost to the point where when we're in practice, I'm going to go some different things, practice schedules and things that we do, and I'm going to talk some defense, and i got some film, and i got a lot of things. I don't know how it's going to work out, uh, you know, but uh, we're, we're going to run through this and, and, and see what happens. And if any time, you know, uh, I don't know what the format, if we're supposed to ask questions during, but if you want to, go ahead and ask, you know. Uh, that's, that's my attitude. But you, you've got to get the kids the, with the tempo, you know, just like the offense, because here's the key. When you play somebody that's a huddled, huddle defense, a huddle offense, your guys are going to be bored almost, okay? They're going to be sitting there having all kinds of time to think fast because thinking fast is a skill that you have to train, okay? Just like they've got to train it, we've got to train it defensively to think fast. And, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the philosophy things, let's see if I can get this to work. There we go. Uh, philosophy for me, I, I'm going to do a little reading to you, but – uh, to have a great defense, the coaches and players must believe in, believe in it and stick with it. All right? To be a great defense, um, I don't think you can change your philosophy week to week. I mean, you know, like this week we're a 4-4, the next week we're a 4-3, the week after that we're a 3-4, we'll throw a little 3-5-3 three, three in there. I, I think you've got to get with something, you've got to stick with it, you've got to, you know, you build on it, and maybe you have packages, nickel packages and stuff like that. Um, but our attitude is we, we got our best 11 players on the field, and, and they ain't coming off unless they're hurt, you know, or we're substituting because they're tired or something like that. All right? But I, I think, you know, if you want to play great defense, you've got to get in a defense that you believe in, uh, whether it's like us, we're a 3-4 defense or a 4-3. It really don't make a difference to me. It's about getting kids on the field and playing fast, okay? Um, you know, we are, you know, we're attacking 3-4 uh, gap control defense. <coughs> um, what I like for us about a 3-4, and I'm going to draw everything against ace, you know, a spread type offense because we're a spread offensive clinic, and, and, and our goal is, you know, my goal basically is to talk about stuff that stopping, you know, stopping the spread. Uh, we've had some success against all, you know, uh, against folks that we play uh, against. So I'm going to draw everything against you know, some type of shot to spread or, you know, that. We, we're going to play our down guys normally. Okay, until this year, I've always played uh, our down guys head up. Uh, and, and because when I, I coached college football for 20, my first 20 years in coaching, I coached college football and evolved from, from a, you know, was a, like a, a shade 50 type um, defense with, with, a, with a rover, you know, and three defensive backs. And all of a sudden, we, about 1995, we started facing some no huddle, spread tight teams. And we couldn't handle it in 3D. Okay? And, and then we got, well, all of a sudden now we take that outside linebacker and walk him out and, and funnel in number one. And, you know, we, we, we couldn't handle it. You're in trouble if you're going to try and play cover two with, with, without, with only three true defensive backs on the, on the field, okay? So we went, we went to more of a 3-4, a, a and we felt we could slant the front. Uh, had an opportunity to, to get with, uh, go to a clinic at Boston College, and they had one of the Pittsburgh Steelers coaches, this was like 95, right, 96, and they talked a lot about zone blitzing out of 3-4. And, and so – we went with the concept of instead of being a shade 50 team to start playing these more multiple spread teams, you know, we wanted to be in, in, a, in a four defensive back scheme, okay? 
and, and a two outside linebacker scheme where we could, we could person if we need want to personnel change it, we're in the same defense, maybe get a little bigger body in there if you've got a tight end or two. You know, we get a little, you know, uh, more of a strong safety type, nickelback type guy, uh, or a combination of. You know, maybe we got, you know, uh, uh, one outside linebacker that's a big kid, and another kid that's but, but uh, 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 another kid that's a more of a DB nickel type player. But we're gonna play our we're gonna play our front guys head up because I, I felt as an offensive lineman in high school and college that was the worst thing I wanted to see was a head up guy because I didn't know if he was going inside outside or straight at me. And I think the other thing is that by if we're gonna be slanting and moving around, we can play with a little smaller of a player unless he's just a big, fast guy, which is great, okay? But, but we can play with a little, little, little smaller player uh, that has speed, and now we can start moving and giving some of them big offensive linemen, hopefully, some issues if we're moving around. On the other hand, if we all of a sudden we're blessed with we've got some big kids, you know, and we can play, we can play head up, or we'll play head up, and, and we'll stuff or we'll step to a, step to a shade, and I'm going to go over some different fronts that we run, st stunts and fronts and things like that. As, th as time goes on, I'm gonna give you a base formation that we use out of this. Um, we play our and we play left and we play left and right with our ends. We don't flop guys. Um, I, I, it really for us it, it, it just works out best. Uh, we play our two outside linebackers. If we get like a flex type Y, all right, we're gonna play normally inside shoulder to you know about inside shoulder and about four to five yards off. All right. Um, and we're going to give a little bu buzz our feet on the snap, buzz our feet, and we're reading. We're going to read. We're going to read quarterback. We're going to read quarterback to back. Okay, with the outside line. If we've got a, a wider number two receiver, then we're going to we're going to kind of apex it. Okay, we're about halfway. Okay, we're going to move about halfway out there. And now, if I've, I've got a little, I'm in a little more space. Even if I want to play a little tighter, if it's a rundown. Then what we do is we're going to give a little, we're going to shuffle and get a little bit of width, not a lot, just just a little bit, okay? Just a little bit. We're going to tighten down as much as we can. I tell the kids apex it, but tighten down as much as you can in here, just to take a, but not so far that they can just chunk that right there, okay? So if we give them a little flexibility. If you're in a boundary, you know, if you're the wide, you know, you'd be a little tighter. If you're the wide side of the field, you might need to be a little bit wider, okay? But we're going to, a general rule of thumb, we're going to say we're going to split the difference between, between the tackle and the number two receiver, okay, if he's, if he's flexed out. All right, we're about four yards, four and a half yards off the line of scrimmage. We've got outside foot back. Again, we play left and right with outside linebackers, okay? And we're going to just take a little read step, one, two, three. And on, the, on that third step, you ought to know if it's ball on the line, ball off the line, you know, what, what, what is it? Is it run? Is it pass? Okay, I use ball on the line meaning run play, uh, ball off the line, meaning straight drop back or, or, or play act, off of play action, okay? Uh, and we play them left and right. Now, I've done before we played strong and weak. You know, maybe we had a bigger kid, you know, that, uh, that we felt we needed to either hide because it's spread, put him into the boundary, a bigger, not quite as fast kid, you know, who, or we wanted coming off, the, coming off the edge from the boundary, okay? Uh, you know, he, or... or if we had a tight end situation, we might put a bigger kid on a tight end. All right, we're right now we're about about the set. We're just playing left and right right now. Okay, the last few years. Okay, um, our Mike and our Will, our Mike linebacker and our Will linebacker, we flop them. We put the Mike to the strength and the Will to the uh, Will away from uh, to the weak side. And the reason that works out for us is because now. In pass drops, it helps us. It just gives the, the mic the same pass drop over and over and over again. No matter it's what coverage we're playing. Okay, same thing with the will. We put them, I put them heels at five, all right, and we're playing outside shoulder to guard. All right. In the secondary, we play our corners uh, left and right. Sometimes what we'll do is, you know, it was funny, we were talking about yesterday, they had a guy that, uh, I don't know if it was Tony or who was saying that, they put their, they put their receiver that didn't know the plays so well to the to the side. Well, that makes sense. That's what we've done. We put the guy, the corner that maybe struggling a little bit or he freezes up every once in a while, and we'll put him to the bench side so our defensive back can say inside leverage or you know he can tell him what's going on, what he needs to be doing. Okay, 
because if he's a good athlete and he can play coverage, I mean, and he can run, I want to help him get on the field. I don't want to say, well, he can't play because he don't know what he's doing. Well, put him right there in your hip pocket and get him on the, you know, get him to where he knows what he's doing. And then eventually as the season goes on, you know, or maybe the game loosens up a little bit and he starts getting in the flow of the game and it ain't so big of a deal. Some kids, they know what to do. They just freeze up sometimes. You know, it gets a little, the lights come on, all of a sudden they're like, whoa, uh, and they just, they just kind of lock in, a, you know, whatever. All right? So the big thing there with the corners, the alignment, we're outside, all right, and we, we, give them a, we coach them up, turn in, you know, like if, if, if here's, here's a step quarterback here, we're, we're kind of cocked in at a 45-degree angle, and we're outside one and five to seven, depending on coverage, down and distance, ability, you know, what we call ability depth. And, and we'll move around. We'll do some things where we'll let them get up a little tighter and, and things of like that, all right? Uh, same thing on the other side, okay? Uh, safety, we normally are going to play a strong and a free, okay? Uh, but if you're really up-tempo, fast-paced, we're probably just going to play left and right, okay? Uh, let's get lined up. It really don't make a difference because you're both, we're, we, you know, we're normally going to play a cover, uh, some form of cover two, so what's the difference if you're the left cover two guy or the right cover two guy? Just getting dang alignment, let's go, Okay? And we normally are going to put them around. We're going to put them inside, inside a number two, about 12 yards deep. Okay? If it's, if you're not the fastest safety, if all of a sudden you're saying, well, hey, this cat right here, he can go, well, back up to 14. Okay? Or 15. Okay? Or whatever you need to, whatever you need to, to take care of your responsibility. Because my, my attitude as far as safety coverage all right. I mean, they've got somebody in front. Corners, you know, corner can't line back up here 18 yards because you're going to run a hitch on them all day. But at safety, you know, if I'm at tw 10, 12, 15, what, what's really the difference? The difference is if I'm at 10, I'm probably going to have to be backpedaling pretty dang fast. If I'm at 15, I can kind of slow pedal, and now, you know, I'm not a great athlete. I can at least have already got some depth, okay? Uh, so we're going to play them about, we're going to play them normally about 12, but down in distance or ability, hey, if you need to, back up. I'm never going to tell you you're too deep, okay? You're never too deep in my, you know, but, you know, for me. Now, every once in, deep, once in a while, DB coach, he's like, well, coach, I'd rather, well, you know what? I'd rather have him back a little deeper because it takes, you know, if they catch the football in here at 15, we run up and tackle them, it takes about six of those to score, okay? It only takes one of these to score, okay? A go route. All right, so let's not get beat deep. All right, let's make them run another play. All right, but, but that's our base alignment that we, we're going to line up against the spread. Um, and I'm going to get into, as time goes on, some fronts. I'm going to have a section where we talk about fronts, uh, uh, stunts, and, and all those different things. All right, um, let's see here. Uh, things that we talk, uh, uh, things, uh, another philosophy is, is for us is, is team unity, all right? No, that, that's important to us. When I first got to Gainesville, um, the, the, the offense was kind of on the, the same page, you know. Uh, defensive, we had a lot of guys that, that just didn't really want to buy into what we were doing. Uh, and and we, had, we had to kind of go with some young kids and develop that, develop that unity. And we weren't really good. They, they weren't really good the year before I got there, all right? But we weren't really good that first year. But it was a year for us on defense. We, we, our record was okay. I mean, we were seven and four. You know, our record was, you know, not bad. But, you know, we weren't really good that first year on defense because we, 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 we were in the process of developing unity and trust. And I think that's big. Uh, trust between the players and the coaches, where the coaches, where the players get the trust in the coaching, that, we're, hey, we're there doing the best thing, you know, for you. You know, we want you to become as good as you can be as a person, you know, as a player, uh, as a student, all the whole thing, all right? Uh, but, but, you know, team unity is, is, is a big thing for us. Uh, respect your teammates. Uh, you know, help them win, and they're going to help you win. Coaches, coaches must stick together and trust them players. We've got to trust each other. I mean, I'm not going to put anybody in a field that I don't trust. And what, what do you mean, you know, trust? I mean, if, if I can't trust that 
You're going to play your quarter, your, your half responsibility. You ain't getting on the field. I don't care how good of an athlete you are. Okay? You've got to know your responsibility, and I've got to trust that you're not going to be in business for yourself and doing your own thing. Okay? You're going to, be doing, you're going to buy into the team concept, okay, and, and do what we're doing. Um, team hustle and aggressiveness. That, that's something that, you know, there's no compromise for hustle. Great defensive teams get to the football. You know, and that's something that we, we're, we're fortunate. We've got a nice big hill next to our practice field. Just there's the field, then there's the track, and then there's a hill that, you know, right there. And if you're not going to run the football right in the middle of practice, just go run a couple of hills. You know, uh, we're going to get them to run to the football. It'll take a lot of pride in that um, because there's one thing. You, you, can have a, uh, you can have guys that are – have half decent ability. If they'll get to the football, you'll be good on defense. Now, if you got talented kids that get to the football, that's when you're gonna have a great defense. All right, get to the football. I mean, that's something that we harp on. We're we're chewing them out. We're chewing at. That's one part of our uh, part of your grade when we grade you. All right, a, a, a goal for us. One of our goals. I'm gonna go over goals here. Is is everybody getting to football every play? We went 2009 season, we went 15 games, all right? I don't know how many plays, okay? You know, 60 plays, 70 plays a game, 15 games, and we had two lows the whole year, all right? Because in 2007, when they didn't want to get to the football, you weren't playing. You were sitting on a bench, or you were, and you were running hills, all right? And, and, and what we do, too, there is on Monday, if you get any lows, we add them up, and every loaf that you get, the whole defense, we're doing up-downs. Five up-downs for, uh, up for every loaf that, that we get. I don't care if you're – I don't care if it's we're winning, losing, or killing them. If you're the JV guy and you're on the game, you better get your butt to the football or them varsity guys are going to be doing up-downs with you on Monday at the end of practice. And that's something that, you know, I know that's a negative reinforcement, but, you know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna demand – they run this football. There's only one of there's only two reasons in my my mind that you're not running to the football. You tired? Come off the field. We'll put somebody else in. No problem. Get you get your drink of water. Catch your breath. Get back on the field. Or you lazy? And we ain't gonna play with lazy players. Okay, that's it. You either tired or lazy. Which is it? And I mean, you got to challenge kids like that. Okay, uh, you know wh what are you? You tired? Let's come on off the field. Hey. Guy over here, you know, he wants to get he can get on the field. He can he can get us to two plays, get back in, but we are not we're not going to stand around and watch the football. We're going to get to the football, okay? And each position coach has got to demand that. And it can't just be me as a defensive coordinator. It's got to be the position coaches too. And it's about finishing a drill, okay? That's something we talk about. We got a big sign. It's been up there way before I got there. All right, on the on the practice set, finish the drill. Everything we're doing, finish the drill. I don't care if it's, you know, a game. I don't care if it's practice. I don't care, if, you know, if it's agilities. It doesn't make a difference what it is. Finish the dang drill. Okay? Finish the play. Um, let's see. Aggressive. Let me go to the next slide. Flexibility. I, I think uh, one of the reasons I like the 3-4 besides the, the uh, possibilities of, of, of more speed on the field, I think, number one, it, it's flexible. In high, in high school, I mean, you know, one week you're playing a spread. The next week you're playing a wing tee. And the week after that you're playing a wishbone team. Uh, you're playing, you're seeing option, you're seeing this, you're seeing that, you're seeing the other thing. It, you might see it all in one game, okay? I mean, I, I've played against teams that were struggling a little bit offensively, and they're going to give you, they run two, three total different offensive packages. They're just searching. But – you know, what you've got to be is be flexible enough to adjust to formations, okay? And I think with a 3-4, with a all right, and four defensive backs, it's, it's easy to adjust to formations because you can be a three-man line. You can be a four, you can walk a line, outside linebacker and be a four-man line. You can walk both outside linebackers and be a five-man line, all right? Uh, you can do, you, you can 
you can give, you can, you can bump the front if you need to. If it's four solid, you need to slide the front over and have five men on the line of scrimmage. I mean, you're, you're in good shape there, okay? Uh, that, that's one of the reasons I like, you know, I think you've got to be defense. Same thing with a 4-3 even, okay? You have the ability to do those things, all right? Um, we like playing a lot of zone defense. Um, we're not, I'm not a big, let's go, you know, a eight, ten blitz the game. We're going we're gonna to blitz in key situations, okay? Uh, and my attitude is we, we, can, we can stop you without blitzing, and why take a chance of blitzing? And, yeah, we might come up with a big, big play, but we also might give you a big, big play, big play and, and momentum. And, and we're good on offense. And so my attitude is let's just get the ball. We, 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 we don't have to score on defense. <laughs> or we don't have to give the ball to the offense on the 10-yard line, you know, to score so they can finally score a touchdown. Just get the ball back to the offense. That's, that's our attitude. And they're going to score from, you know, they're going to score, they're going to score points. The big thing we don't want to do is give up big plays and get into, get into a situation where we're allowing, you know, allowing them to stay in the game. Okay. Uh, you know, because, because our offense put the ball, put, you know, Tony talked about yesterday, you know, scoring fast. We score fast. <laughs> I mean, we were, I, we, I, I didn't, we didn't have, other than when the JV guys got in, we didn't have any 15, 18 yard, uh, play drives for touchdowns. All right, we had five, seven, two, four, you know, those type of, you know, drives. So you're, 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 you know, you're getting a lot more series on defense. You may not be playing a ton more plays, but they're going to, instead of getting the ball eight times in a game, they may get it 12 or 13. Okay, and now you have to defend three or four more series. So I'm not going to put ourselves in a situation where we give up a couple big plays that we don't need to be giving up. All right, uh, and uh, um, I think zone defense gives our, our pass defenders a better opportunity to break on the football and run support. Now, we play man coverage, and we do some man coverage packages. I'm going to go over it later on. Man coverage package that helps us pack the box, okay? Um, the, uh, but, but we're not going to just, you know, play zero coverage, eight or ten snaps a game. We're going to play it a few key situations. Uh, keep it simple. Uh, and I, I don't mean, you know, so simple that you can't adjust to what other folks are doing offensively, but simple enough to where your kids can understand it. I think if, you know, that's a big thing. I, I talk to our, our Mike linebacker. You know, I talk to our safety. Does that, that's what I'm talking about, does that make sense? I say, you know, does that make sense what I'm talking about here, what we're doing here? Is that too much for you guys to handle? You know, ask them questions and say, hey, you need to be honest with me, okay? Because if we need to, I'd rather run one or two defenses, really good, okay? One or two, you know, stunts, one or two front uh, slants, coverage or two, and get really good at that, then have a zillion things and be no good at anything. And now you're just calling stuff because, well, that didn't work. Let's try another one. Let's see if we can't stop them with this zone blitz. Let's see if we can't stop them with this pressure. Let's see if we can't stop them with this front. Now, let's get good at a couple of things, you know, and let's build on that. Okay, and, and, and that's things that you've got to decide what you feel. Our weekly defensive goal, number one's win. Uh, that's, a, that's a thing that, um, that I think you just got to check the ego. They talk about ego. You got to check the ego. Yeah, we all want shutouts and we all want to hold them under a certain amount of points and yards and all those different things like that. But the big thing is, is winning. Okay, win you know, and, and, and all those other things will be fine. Okay, all those th other things will come along. All right, you, you've got to just, you know, how are we going to win? Because I've coached on in college football where we were averaging offensively 13, 14 points a game, and I had to sit there in the office and try and figure out, you know, how are we going to hold these teams under 10 points? Yeah, they burned a lot of clock because they were running the football team and the clock was rolling, but they weren't scoring no dang points. Okay. So, you know, all of a sudden I'm sitting there and, and you're losing games, you know, 14 to 10. You know, or you, you say, well, we played pretty good on defense, but we lost, you know. Uh, and all of a sudden, you know, and, and the same thing happened. It, it, but when I came to Gainesville, all of a sudden we're, they get in this, they were just starting to get in this system and they're putting, we're, we're averaging 35, 40 points a game. And it's a whole lot easier to play defense. Yeah, we're playing more serious, sure. 
But we, if we all of a sudden, you know, 15 years ago, I'm sitting there going, man, if we give up one big play, we could lose this game seven to seven to three. You know, there, here, I'm sitting there. I got a little cushion, and I, I'll be honest with you, your offense starts to get rolling, and the def and the other team's offensive philosophy changes. It changes a lot. All of a sudden, they get down by two touchdowns if you're in the first quarter and you're leading 14 to nothing, and I don't care what their game plan is, unless they're a disciplined offensive coordinator, the game plan went out the window. Okay? That, that's the way we look at it. And, and now we got you. Okay? We got you. Because, you know, you're going to start doing things you didn't really game plan for. Because they're not sitting promote most – Offensive quarters, and I said, well, if we get down 14 to nothing in the first quarter, what are we going to do? I mean, you know, they're, they're not doing that. I mean, some might because they're, they're going to cover every detail. But, you know, they're, they're sitting there. How can we troll, control the clock? Okay. But number one's winning. We talked about swarming to the football. Our, our third goal is allowed 10 points or less. If we get a shutout, uh, which we're fortunate we got three this year, um, and we get we I me I go to Little Caesars Pizza buy about six pizzas and we eat pizza while we watch film. I give each kid a couple, not a, you know a whole box, a couple three slices, and you you'd be surprised. I mean it's been the fourth quarter and we're winning thirty five to nothing, and the older guys are chewing out the younger guys. You better keep their ass out of the end zone because I want that freaking pizza on Monday. They're about ready to get in a dang fight with some ninth grader who ain't playing his responsibility over two slices of pizza, okay, because it comes a pride thing, okay? And, and you know, last year I, when I was here, God was talking, special teams guy was talking about, you know, giving candy bars out, and I said, yeah, that's all we're doing. You know, we're just, we're giving a little reward for, you know, for doing something, you know, big. And it cost me about 30 bucks, 25, 30 bucks. I mean, I take it out of my own pocket. Ain't no big. I mean, I probably could get it from Coach Miller, but because he's got, but I just kind of, well, you know, because when they say, when they say to me, thanks, Coach, for the pizza, I say, ain't no problem. You guys deserve it. You know, but that's something that, that we've done, I've done for, I don't know, maybe well, all 11 years now that I got, you know, I think I even did a couple years in college when I was coaching college football. So maybe the last 15 years or so. All right. Um, but, you know, that's something I think that, that you can give a good goal for the kids. Um, um, our fourth goal is give the offense the ball inside the 50-yard line two times. Anywhere, I don't care if it's a 49 and three quarters, you know, just give the ball to the offense a couple of times, you know, change field position, whether it's blocking a punt, whether it's returning a punt, whether it's a turnover, whether it's, we fair caught, we, you know, we stopped them inside, you know, we held them back inside their own 10. We, they punt it, we fair caught it at the 45. I don't care what it is. Give, it to, give them the ball two times because we're going to score. I mean, that, our offense is going to score. Uh, 200 yards or less defense, that's getting harder and harder. With the more spread teams you're facing, that, that's tough. Um, you know, we've, we've I'm, I'm thinking about probably bumping it up to like 250. Um, because most offenses, spread offense, if they don't, you know, Coach Miller, his goal is like 300. So I figure if we can hold them to 250, he's below his goal, so that's pretty good. All right? So, uh, you know, um, I mean, the way the offenses are moving the football now and spreading you out, 250 is not bad. I mean, that's pretty good. Um, force two turnovers. Um, we don't care what kind of, you know, intercept, turnover on downs. You know, that's a turnover. If they go for it on fourth down and we stop them, that's a turnover. We're turning it over. But turn it over, you know, get a couple. And those are momentum changes, okay? Um, allow no plays over 20 yards. That, that's tough with the spread offenses but, uh, that you're seeing now. But, you know, our big thing is, is you know, if you can put the, the – if we give up, say, a 20, 21-yard play, we're not really – you know, won a game or something like that. We're really not getting on the kids too hard. What we don't want to do is give up a 20-yard-plus touchdown. You know, our, our big thing is force, force them to run another play. Make them run another play. Right, if we make them run another play, we can force a turnover. 
okay? Keep them out of the end zone. But, but that's a, a goal for us is try to, try to hold offense to no plays of 20 yards or more. Make three big plays on defense. Um, it could be anything. I mean, you, you decide what big plays are. You know, to me, and I know he's not a, right now he's not a popular guy, all that, but 20-something year, years, eight years ago, I sat in a, a national coach convention, Joe Paterno spoke. You know, right now, if you mention his name, you're, you know, you're in trouble. But, you know, I, Joe said, one, uh, Coach Paterno said one thing, he said, uh, I'll never forget, he said, a football game is decided normally plays. There's three plays in a game that you can sit back and say, man, we won that game because of this play, that play, and that play. Or we lost this game because of this play, that play, and that play. You know, he said, the only thing, you don't know when those three plays are going to be. So that's something that we've come up with. I've always had as a goal is make big, big, three big plays on defense. It could be a stop. It could be a turnover. It could be a fourth down stop, a turnover. You just decide what they are, what, you know, where, where those plays happen, okay? Um, score on defense or set up a score. Uh, we do a lot of scoop and score drills, a lot of strip drills. Um, you know, a, a lot of things where we're, you know, where we're trying to score on defense. Now, we don't have to. Fortunately, we're, we're in a situation where our offense scores a lot of points. But, uh, you, know, you know, there's nothing more that gets a, team, a defensive team jacked up as scoring on defense. Whether it's a safety, you know, scoring, you know, interception, taking it back, whatever it happens to be. Um, how to be a great system team. All right? and, and that's a key because I think a lot of times your, your defensive coaches are going to fight that over there. Don't fight it. To me, I embrace it. Okay? Uh, all your defensive coaches must be into, uh, into, into buying into what the head coach, okay? The, that, uh, you know, I should have high, highlighted that. The head coach has decided to run that offense. My attitude is, guys, all right, buy in or go find someplace else to coach because that's the offense the head coach is running. If I don't like the offense that the head coach is running, I need to get my ass out of Gainesville and go find some team that runs the wishbone or the wing tee or something that's not that over there, okay? But you better plan on finding out how to win you know, unless you just got stud players on offense year after year after year, you better find out ways to win 14 to 10, okay? You know, that, that's a key. You've got to get the defensive coach. They'll get the offensive coach to buy in, okay? But you, if you're the defensive coordinator, you've got to get the defensive coach on your staff to buy into that offense right there. Yeah, but coach, they, they throw in the football and the clock ain't running. I don't give a damn. They're scoring 47 po 37 points a game they're averaging over the last five years. I, I don't care. Okay? You know, uh, it's a whole lot easier when we're up 21 to nothing early in the second quarter. You know what that other team's offense is doing. Let's go get them. We're going to play pass coverage and we'll go get them. Four-man rush, three-man rush, zone, whatever we want to do. Because they're going to they're gonna get out of their element. And we've got them one-dimensional. The offense has helped us get them one-dimensional. We ain't done jack. Okay? Because most teams are probably sitting there looking at us and saying, how are we going to outscore Gainesville? You know, we, you know our defense, you know, their offensive coordinator is sitting there probably saying, we're probably, we're probably, our defense is probably going to give up 28, 35 points. How are we going to score 25, 38 points? You know, so... They're game planning. The, the offense that you're trying to stop is game planning already how not to lose. Okay? They, they've already probably changed it. Well, we're going to slow the tempo down or we're going to, you know, because we're going to try and jam it in there. But now all of a sudden they get behind. Their whole game plan changes. And you've got to sell your defensive coaches on those things because they're just like the kids. <laughs> you know, they're, 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 they're going to be, you know, one thing I found, in, you know, is that you've got to, you've got to, Set your standard of what you expect mentality-wise, okay? And, and I don't care if our, play, our offense goes three and out. I don't care. You know, I tell our kids, at times, our offense, they're high risk, high reward. Our quarterback throws 40 passes. He may, he, he may throw an interception. Who cares? He threw five touchdowns that game. 
I'll try. I'll take that trade. Five touchdown passes for one interception. Okay, uh, but you got to get you got to get the, the coaches to buy in. Um, we try to go ones versus ones as much as we can during practice. Okay, now we don't we don't take anybody to the ground. We don't block. They don't block. We don't tackle their guys. They don't block our guys on a leg. Okay, we haven't practiced in full pads. Helmet, shoulder pad, girdle, thigh pad, pants, knee pads. All. We haven't practiced in five years, uh, in the last four years, excuse me, the first year we've allowed. The last four years, we've practiced in full pads maybe three times. That's it. We normally don't wear the pants. We wear helmet, shoulder pad, put the girdle pad on. We don't put the pants on. Kids love it. Okay? I mean, they love it. They think it's all, when it's 95 out there, they think it's a whole lot cooler. Okay? Uh, uh, but now we're forcing them to stay on their feet, okay? We're forcing them to stay on. You don't tackle us. I mean, we don't tackle them. They won't block us on the leg. And nobody touches the dang quarterback, okay? You ain't, Coach Miller does not have to yell at my guys if they're bumping into the quarterback. I don't even want them running in front of the quarterback to where he's going to throw the football and hit his hand on your helmet because – He's my best friend. As a defense quarterback, that freaking quarterback is my best friend. Okay? Because if he can score 35 points, I mean, are we were fortunate. We've had, in the five years I've been there, we've had three really good quarterbacks. We've got a sophomore right now that threw for over 4,000 yards and, I don't know, a, a gazillion touchdowns. You know, he had, he had uh, I think he was, he, he, was at, he was responsible for like 55 touchdowns, whether running or throwing this year. Uh, I mean, threw for 4,000, ran for over 1,000. He's only a 10th grader. I mean, we want to take care of him, okay? And he's a great kid, okay? He's a good student, and he's a great kid to be around. He is my best friend, okay? I'm going to take, I'm going to make sure my guys don't hurt him, okay? Because he's making my job a whole lot easier, all right? And, and those are things going back to that defensive coach has got to buy in. Okay? But we're going to try and go ones versus ones as much as we can <coughs> uh, because, you know, we're getting good at coverage. We're getting good at, you know, the next thing, work hard on run defense. We're going to, we've got to, we've got to be able to stop the run. We're going to get good at pass defense. All the passing leagues we go to and all the times that we throw the football in practice against, you know, working on against our offense and pass skills and this, that, and the other thing, you know, we're going to get good at pass coverage. Okay? But we've really got to focus on stopping the run. How are we going to stop the run? And we've got to work on that in inside drills. We've got to work that in team. I'm going to go again, our, our, our practice where, where offense goes, where we're going our first against their first in a run drill, inside and outside combined runs. Okay? I'm going to go through some of that. Uh, <clears throat> the defensive coaching staff must learn how to coach on the run. They're not going to call – they're not going to stop and say, oh, uh, coach, uh, D-line coach is, is trying to explain to his guy how to do a rip move. They're running another play. And I love it because down the bottom it says, I mean, you know, to me, you get good by lots of reps on defense. You don't get good by a rep and then you talk to the kid for five minutes and then he does another rep and you talk to him another three to five minutes. And, then, you know, he gets better by repping it over and over and over and over again. He does it wrong. You correct him on the run. You get him to where he does it. Or you teach him, you teach him how to do things in individual at a little slower pace. When we get against our offense, we want to be going fast. Okay? We want that up tempo. You know, we're working on conditioning. All right? We're working on mental toughness because we're having to concentrate and think what's going on real quick. Our offense's goal is trying to snap the ball every 10, 12 seconds. Okay? So we're getting our kids conditioning them mentally to learn how to you know, react and, and, and get their responsibility done right. But, but repetitions, I mean, but at the same time, you can't just stand there because it turns into offensive drill and your kids ain't getting no better. You've got to learn how to coach on the run. You've got to get, if you're the defensive coordinator, you've got to get guys that are helping you coach because you can't coach all 11, okay? All right? You've got to get guys that will coach kids on the run, Okay? And, I mean, that means I'm, I'm yelling at them from a distance. I'm running right there beside them. I'm running over here. I'm running over there. I'm on the move. 
Okay? I cannot stand, like, you know, in center, way back here and just, hey, Johnny, you're supposed to. Now, you've got to be up there in the ear because there's a lot of, you know, with the front, with, with all the things that are going on. I mean, I stand right here behind the linebacker. I mean, right there. I'm on his ass. And I'm in his ear, and I'm telling him what he's supposed to be doing or what he should have done that last play. Okay? Or what he's going to do this play. Or I'll push him that way. Okay? I mean, you've got to be coach. Our defensive line, you know, we, we were pretty good. We were pretty good up front this year. But a couple of our backup kids were struggle mentally. Our defensive line was standing right behind that nose guard, and he would throw his ass into the A-gap if he was supposed to slant over there. Okay? Our defensive back coaches would, would be sitting right here, you know, right inside that free safety in their ear or that corner and coach them up. Okay? I mean, you've got to be right there moving out. Of offensive coach is young. Coach, get out of the field. They got, you got 18 guys on the field. Well, we're coaching them up, coach. Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. We'll move. We'll move out there for a little bit, right back up in there. Okay? Because we're going to coach them up. You've got to coach them up. You can't just expect they're going to get it on their own. All right? <clears throat> I mean, I, no huddle, they're going to be in shape, okay? Get good at kickoff coverage. Well, what the hell are you talking about, Coach? Well, if you're kicking off seven, eight times a game, you need to get good at kickoff coverage because if not, it's always going to be they've got good field position every time we score, Coach. You know, my goal is it to be first and eighty. Well, what are you talking about? We either got a kicker who can kick it in the end zone or we got coverage guys who are going to run down there and keep them somewhere near the 20, inside the 20 or somewhere near it, okay? And, and now it's first and 80 for them, okay? And the percentage, you go from the 20, minus 20, what the percentage are taking it down and scoring as compared to just get it out to the 40, okay? And now the percentage go way up. I don't have all those stats. I don't, I don't, but I know that if, it's a whole lot easier to drive it 60 yards than it is 80. That's my attitude, okay? So, you know, we've got to get good at kickoff coverage. We put a lot of our starters on, on a kickoff coverage team. Now, if we got a cat who can kick it in the end zone, that's a place where we can, hey, he's going to kick in the end zone. I, I, can put the, I can put the principal's son out there, okay? Fortunately, the principal's son's a pretty good player. We've got a pretty good <laughs> We got bar principals got a pretty good players with eighth graders. So, uh, but you know you, the the main thing there is is you've got to get good at kickoff coverage. You got to work on it. We don't work on the way we work on it. We're not working on it. Uh, like put a team out there and ram into each other. And after a while, that's a joke. You're getting guys hurt. You're getting guys not going down that hard. We work on timing. And what are you talking about timing? We work on our kicker. We get lined up, okay? We get back at our spot, and we're working on trying to get them as close to the line of scrimmage, to the, the kick, to the 40-yard line, as when the ball's kicked at full speed and go down hard. We got our best players on the field. If, they, if, my, if, if, if my Mike linebacker who leads the team in tackles can't run downfield and make a tackle, we're going to lose anyway. I, I don't have to do a bunch of drills you know, where, okay, uh, you know, like a special teams coordinator drill if you're in college, he's got to earn his money. He's got to do, do these drills of dipping and ripping and all that stuff. I tell him, okay, here's how we're kicking it left deep left, okay? Every, if somebody comes block you, dip and rip to the left. I mean, he's a starter. He's one of our best players on the team. The guys I, I got, you know, I got most of these guys that are starters, defensive backs and linebackers on the kickoff team. And we're going to work on timing and getting down and closing as fast as we can. Okay? And we tell them one thing. If you're 20 yards away from the football, dip and rip to the ball kick side. If you're within 10 yards, attack the wedge and shoulder form everything and, and squeeze to the wedge. And that's it. And we, we, had one, we had one kickoff return this year past the 40-yard line. That was it. You know, my first year there, there we had a special teams coordinator, and he's doing a lot. Of, and we, we, we start every game, every time our offensive score, he'd be doing pooch kicks and doing these live drills during team, and we had a shitty kickoff coverage team, and every time they had the ball at the minus 40 or, uh, or at the 50-yard line. I'm like, just kick it out of freaking bounds, and they'll get it at the 35. All right, we'll save ourselves 10 or 15 yards. All right? So, but, you know, get good at kickoff coverage. All right? 
talk to head coach, and you need the fastest, most athletic player. You're going to be coach. You, you're, this is a great offense. You can score all points with schmucks. We need all the good players on defense. Okay? I mean, it's the greatest offensive system. Uh, you got your quarterback, but I need everybody else. Okay? We won't mess with the quarterback. You, you pick the guy you want to be your quarterback. Okay? All right? And, you, you know, you put any schmuck in the offensive line. You know, you can put these other guys who are, don't want to hit nobody at wide receiver. Okay? Find you a pretty good running back. Okay? And, but we get the rest. And we need all the kids that can run. You know, linemen. We take a lot of times where, you know, we don't have a lot of true defensive linemen. We take a lot of linebacker type kids and put them at ends. You know, we'll at times we'll play them. And we'll we'll play a, a kid who's a, you know pretty quick, athletic kid that knows and move it move him around a lot. Now, fortunately, this last few years we've had some big kids who could move. Both they were big and fast. Okay, so that's the best of both worlds. But we're gonna we're gonna get the best kids we can on defense. And then the couple of good kids that you know the quarterback. He's going to now be like a backup safety for us. And if we're really in a bind, he can get in and he can play. And we, you know, we just teach him a couple of coverages. He's concentrating on that quarterback, but he's going to know what to do. And normally, if he's in the game, it's because they're throwing a the football and he's going to either be he's probably a deep half. And that's all he's got to learn is deep half. And he's such a good athlete, it really doesn't make a difference. I mean, he's just going to backpedal. You don't have to teach him. Just backpedal Deshaun and break on a football. Okay? All right, uh, you know, same thing at you know, same thing with other positions. Now we do some things in practice with some crossover. We're we're fortunate we two platoon. Okay, uh, we're, we don't play a lot of guys both ways. But our best offensive kids are a lot of times are our backup, you know, backup defensive kids in, in a pinch. Okay, I'm not going to put, you know, our backup, you know, our fr our quarterback as our backup free safety in a tight ball game that we need. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to put. We're winning. 35 to 7, and our starting strong safety goes down. He ain't going in at safety. Okay, there's no reason. We can win without him playing safety. Well, they might score a touchdown. So we win 35 to 14. Who cares? Okay? You know, but we're, we're going we're gonna to do those things. We're going to get our best players we can on defense. Now, the kids who can run. All right? If you got slow defensive linemen, you ain't going to stop the spread because they're going to be huffing and puffing. Chasing screens. They ain't going to chase screens. They're going to get out there and say, screw it, I can't get out there, and they're going to stop. And you're going to be playing a screen with eight guys, okay, instead of 11. All right? Um, fight for your practice time, okay? I mean, you've got to fight for your practice time. Uh, build it into the practice schedule. You know, Coach Miller, he'll say, Coach, you done? Well, well, can we do it this amount of time? I said, if you want to lose, yeah, we'll be, we can get it done in this amount of time. No, I don't want to lose. Well, I, don't, I, need ten, I need 10 more minutes down here in team. Okay? I mean, you just got to fight for your practice time. Okay? Uh, you've got to develop good open field tacklers. Okay? If you want to stop the spread, you better tackle well in the open field. If you don't can't open, tackle in the open field, I'd rather run one defense – front and one coverage and tackle good than the other way around, than a bunch of a bunch of fronts and I can't tackle. Okay? We're gonna work on tackling every day. Okay? Uh, different types of tackling. Open field, and I'm gonna go over that here in a, in a little bit when we get to practice schedule. Uh, you, you must develop defensive backs and linebackers with good hands. H how many times you drop an interception, the next play they score? or they get a first down and keep the drive going. If you've got to get defensive backs and linebackers to develop good hands, to be playmakers, to make a play when you need it, okay? You can't be dropping. I mean, as a wide out, I drop a, 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 drop a ball, no big deal. Next play, come back to me, I'll catch it. Linebacker, defensive backs, you drop it, they're probably going to score. And that's how we tell the kids. And we work on it. Before practice, you know, we stand out there, play catch. Linebacker stand out there, play catch. I got every linebacker is a long snapper. So they stand there. I got every defensive back is either a punt returner or a kick returner. 
and they're catch. Now it's not as good as catching, but they're catching. If you catch a punt, you can catch anything. Okay, so they're catching punts. They're catching footballs. They jog it in and they throw it to the linebacker during specialties, spe specialties. You know, catching a football in pre-practice. Okay. We used to go, when the offense went noose, pat, and go, we used to send all the defensive backs and linebackers to noose, pat, and go until about two years ago. Okay? And, and we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna work on catching the football. Okay? You've got to do it. You've got to, and you got, you know, this, uh, we had a defensive back start for us this year that as a ninth grader, he couldn't catch nothing. Okay? He was horrible. And the offense goes, we don't want TK. He can't catch. We said, well, we'll take him. He can run and he can jump and he's a good kid and he'll hit you. And we put him at corner and catching punts, standing there playing catch ball practice. Kids got pretty good hands right now. Not great hands, but pretty good. If it hits him in the hands, he'll catch it. Okay? And, and so you just got to develop kids that can catch the ball. You can't sit there and say, well, I do ball drills every day with my DBs. Well, how many balls do they catch? Three. Three balls ain't getting it. Okay? I mean, they got to be catching 30. 40, 50 a day. It adds up. Okay? It, it adds up. Um, use the practice schedule to your advantage. Right, and I'm going to go over that here in a little bit, and you'll see what I'm talking about there. Sit in on Tony's meeting and learn to spread. I've been coming now to this for five years, uh, four or five years, and I sit in there, and I'm listening to what he's doing. Are they run this route. How would we cover it? Okay? They run this. They run this block. How are we going to handle this? They run the, his mentality. Some of the things that you, you, you know, you're going to study your opponent. You're watching live game film. Is all you're doing. You know, and take notes. I bought first year here. I bought a playbook. Now they're giving us one. They gave us one. But but I bought a playbook and started filling in the notes. All you're doing is making a notebook on how to defend the spread. Well, there's different types of spread. Because, well, yeah, but when it comes right down to it, they're throwing a the football, they're running the screens, they're running, you know, zone read. You know, become a student of the offense because more and more teams are running it, and you're going to see more. It's like back in the 80s, 70s, option. You know, you had to be a def you had to know how to defend the option. Okay? You still do in high school. I mean, we face a couple teams that run the option. Okay? Uh, You've got to be a student of the spread offense. You've got to know what they're doing, what their, what their concepts are. Why are they doing what they're doing? All right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to skip that. Me uh, team, de team defense, you know, we talk about mental discipline, physical discipline, key, reading keys, pursuit. Talked about a lot of those things. Consistency, enthusiasm, team concepts. Uh, game planning. Number one things we want to do is we want to put down for what formations do they run? Okay, we're, we're gonna we're gonna have formations. Okay, we're gonna look at formations. What what do these guys do? Okay, I mean, and and we don't get into a lot of you know like for instance, twins open with two backs. We're gonna see that. Are we gonna see that? Yes. Okay. What are, how are we if they. Ace, trips, no backs. What are we going to do if they come out in quads? End over, tackle overs. What are we going to do to these things? Okay? Now, here's the key. You've got to make sure your players know the adjustments to all formations if they're in, if they're in te a fast tempo. Right, well, what are you talking about? We've got, I can, like, for instance, I can go what we call formation check. Formation check. We just go this. The offense is going fast. Just check the whatever. Okay, and we've got okay. This hey, we're going to run. We're going to run. If it's two backs, we're going to run this front and this coverage. Okay. If it's one back, ace. If it's any kind of one back, we're going to run this front. Okay. All right. If it's ace, we're going to run this cup of tougher two. If it's trips, we're going to run this cup of tougher two with this adjustment and so on. And where we learn that, actually, to be honest with you, it's all summer. When we go to passing league, we never call nothing. We just go formation check. Formation check. Because I ain't at passing scale to win. I'm there to practice things that I, that I, that's going to help us win. Okay? And formation check teaches the, the kid. For, by us calling formation check, we're teaching those kids, okay, well, if, if it we're going fast pace, it's fast pace, we need to be in this. We're going to be in this, say, cover three. Okay, we're going to be in two, if two backs, we're going to be in 
you know, strong, we call strong, you know, strong red, which is a strong side outside linebacker uh, on the line of scrimmage rushing, and we're going to rotate the cover three. Okay? If they're in one back, we're going to slant the front, okay, and we're going to play seven, uh, five under two deep, like a, a two, what we call two read, and we're going to bring one of the linebackers, the, one of the weak side linebackers, either inside or outside. And normally, you know, we just give a you and me call. Okay, and I'm going to go over that in a little bit. But, but to where they just, because to me, it's, it, if the offense is going fast tempo, number one, the number one thing is if the offense is going fast tempo, they have a limited amount of plays they're going to run. So why do you need 2,000 defenses? Why can't I just get lined up? Because I'd rather, again, going back to that mentality, I'd rather be playing fast with 11 guys knowing what we're doing being in a good, you know, good, solid defense, we got a chance to let players make plays than to nine guys be doing one thing and two guys be doing something else because they don't know what's going on. Because communication is huge in stopping the spread. You've got to be able to communicate. Not to be talking to each other, signaling. You know, the defensive backs have got to signal each other coverage. We look at each other, we give them the coverage. We give them read. It's our read. Read, 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 read. We're saying it and we're, we're, we're getting eye contact. Okay, but you've got to get these kids to where they're conditioned. Okay, it's fast tempo formation check. Okay, it's one back. Let's we're getting in this, and, and just let's get lined up and play instead of sitting there saying, "Well, uh, we're going to run this zone blitz and blah blah." I mean, that's fine if that's what your one thing's going to be. Then it's a zone. That's fine. It could be a zone blitz. Okay, but get something that the kids can kind of get hang their hat on and say, "Hey, it doesn't really make it." What they're running. What run play, what pass play, we got a chance to stop them if we're in this front and coverage. All right? And let, play, again, getting that back mentality. Players win games, not coaches. Okay? And, and get them to play fast. Okay? Get them to play fast. And the only way they're going to play fast is if they know what they're doing. Because if they don't know what they're doing, they're going to be like, do I do this or do I do that? And then they're going to play slow. They're going to stand up, they'll be looking around, they're not going to know what to do. Okay? Um, person, the next thing we look at is offensive linemen. You know, who's the best, who's the worst? What's their strengths and weaknesses? Quarterback, is he a running quarterback? What's his hot routes? You know, our, if we show blitz and they check the, if we know they're going to, how do they run it? You know, normally we see they're either going to run an out for a hot, or they're going to run a slant, or they're going to run a go. Okay, so that gives our defensive back. Hey, normally if, if we're running a blitz and they pick it up and they're checking to a high, and you could tell, you know, hey, they're checking, expect an out. Okay, not saying jump it and the guy runs an in, a slant and you're, you know, he's running a slant and you're covering an out, but give him a little bit of, you know, thought there. Okay, give that a little thought. Uh, do we need to spy the quarterback? Is he a guy who's going to run around by time, or is he a guy who's just going to stand there in the pocket? and slide a little bit and throw the football? Or is he guys going to tuck it and run? Do we need to spy him? How do we need to spy him? Oh, if he's a guy who's going to tuck it and run, who's an athlete, we may take that extra linebacker all right, and spy him, you know, a true read spy. If he's a guy who's going to sit in the pocket, we may take that extra linebacker and let's just kind of go get him. Okay? So you've got to adjust your spies, what you want to do. Okay? Uh, Running backs, their speed, their th what type of pass blocker are they? Tony, you know, something that about last night is exactly what we look to do. We try to get that guy or that guy on that guy in pass, in pass rush. We want the back blocking the linebacker. Okay? Our, rule, our, our thing has always been not, not so much because we kept the back in, which, yeah, I was like, hey, the light bulb went off. Yeah, that's, that's, that's still, yeah, it keeps them in. Okay? Our thing was... We wanted, we figured this guy wasn't as good a pass blocker as any of these five. And we just wanted to figure a way to get the back to have to block the linebacker. So it, th there's different ways you can try to accomplish that, okay? What slants or twists or whatever, okay? But how good of a blocker, you know, how are they going to pick that up? Receivers, who's their number one receiver? You know, how good is he? I mean, yeah, he's the number one, but is he like a star or is he just pretty? pretty good. Do we need to double them? You know, 
Who can we man up on? If we want to play man coverage, can't we? What kind of man coverage do would we want to play? Okay? We were, you know, sometimes when we're most of the time we're playing zero coverage, we're gonna get, we're gonna move to it, we're gonna get right up in your face, and we're gonna play it. Well, third round of playoffs, we're playing Sandy Creek, and they had receivers out the wazoo, and we couldn't cover them any. And we never mind one of them, we couldn't cover any of them in press coverage, you know four or five times, and then not score a big play. So we, we just played all our zero coverage about four yards off that week. All right, and, and, and it bought us a little more time. Okay? Uh, so you're going to adjust, you know, who can you, you just adjust what type of man coverage you want to play based on the receivers. Um, sometimes we'll, you know, we want to talk about we wanna, who do we want to double. You know, uh, you know we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more too as I get into coverage and it'll make some more sense to you. Um, things that we got to defend. Top plays. We're going to pick out. We can't, number one, form, you got to be able to defend every formation. But you can't take time on stopping every play. Okay? You're not going to look at every play enough. To, you know, there's a point where kids just got to get off blocks and make tackles. You know, you've got to be able to line up to every formation. But you've got to be able to stop their top three or four run plays. Okay, with zone, zone read, power, whatever it happens to be. And we're going to work on those, okay, in inside drills and some in team, okay. There are two couple of top screens, screen plays, okay. What, what's their top couple of screens? They run the bubble, they run the jail. What do they run? They're, they're two best screens, all right. A four or five pot pass concept, you know, what do they run? We've got to be able to match up to these routes in this particular coverage or coverages. Right, um, and we sit there and actually going to say, "Here's how we're going to cover it." I mean, and, and they cover two. They run this route here. We're going to cover it this way. Okay, uh, trick plays. You got to be able to defend the trick plays because you know they're going to run some just to screw with you. So you, you you better be able to defend a couple of those trick plays. And and there's times where we make up trick plays that they don't even run. You know, you talked about being over pre prepared. I mean, a reverse is a reverse. You know, off of that you got reverse pass. Okay, you know, throwbacks to the quarterback, you know, just work on trick plays, you know. Uh, we'll throw one in. The, if a team, like say, we're not playing a spread team, we're playing a, uh, another offensive, a wing T team, and they maybe they don't have a trick play, we'll put a, a reverse in there just to, you know, just, just to practice it. Okay. Uh, now, go, fortunately, going against our offense, we get to see a number of trick plays. Okay. Um, we talked about things you need to be doing well. Tackling, uh, pursuit, you know, gang, tackle, pursuit. I mean, you got to get to the football. Uh, angle, tackle. Um, don't, what we talked to the kids about is don't get on top of the, don't get on top of the, the ball carrier. Exam and what I mean by that, if he's got the football here, running with the football, don't get on top of him because what's going to happen? You're going to block your own guy, and he's going to cut back, okay? We talk about angles of pursuit and work on those in different, drill, in different tackling circuit drills that I'll go over, all right? But, but work on proper pursuit angles, all right? We don't need you all outside the ball. We need one guy outside the ball and everybody else pursuing on an angle, okay? And keep everything an angle tackle. We don't want head-up tackle. If an angle tackle, you've got two ways you can go. He can come back into you, or he can run away from you. If you get head up on him, he's got three ways he can go, right, left, and over you. So take away, take away one of those cuts right now by keeping, at, keeping leverage. Um, open field tackling. There, we're not looking for big hits. We are head up. I just got to get down. I got to grab on to something, use my feet, tackle with my feet. Okay, slide, move my feet. I'm not going to get a big hit. Just grab on the claw. And we get, let's get pursuit there. If he gets a couple extra yards, no big deal. Just get him on the ground. Okay? He catches it, or he's running, he catches the football, you break down, he's, you're at 10 yards, he drags you forward for three or four more yards, hey, good tackle. That's, that's our attitude. Good tackle. But he, but he gained five more yards, Coach. Good tackle. If, he, if you hadn't tackled him, he's still running. Okay? All right? So, so, you know, that's a good tackle to me. If it's you and me in space 
and, and I get you on the ground, I don't care how many more yards you gained after, if I get you on the ground, that's a good tackle. Okay? Um, two on one tackle. Okay, so stop run, make the run, uh, make, you know, make the offense be one dimensional, you know, play good third down defense. Uh, we talk, we talk about, you know, first down, obviously is important. Third down, we got, you know, third and shorts, we work on our, we, we take a five minute block every, every practice and work on short yardage plays. All right, we take a, we take a block, we're working on third, third and long plays every day, okay? Where we're just, here's the plays they run in third and long, here's the plays they run in third and short, and we run them, scout team runs them, okay? Many, many times they can go through that, say just five plays. Many times they can run through those five plays in five minutes. If they get five plays in five minutes, okay. Hopefully they, get, they, they run through the five and then go back and start over again and get two or three more. Okay. Um, play good red zone defense. You're going to, like for this year, we were, we were yardage-wise, we were okay defensively. Okay. We were not a great, you know, stone them three and out over and over and over again defense like we were in 2008 and 2009. And, you know, uh, we were a bend but kind of don't break bunch this year. And we got, we got really good at red zone defense. All right. Force field goals, you know, uh, whatever. Come up with a big play on third, third or fourth down. You know, you've got to sell to the kids. I really believe. You know, a lot of times it's a mentality. Uh oh, they're getting close to our, they're getting close to the goal line here, and they start panicking. Well, heck, you got less field. It's the same as he's talking about over there. Balls on a minus one. We got 99 yards to go, 90 yard yards of field to play with. Same thing. Hey, they got less field to play with. What's the difference between being first and ten on the 20 going in, all right, or first and ten on the other 20? You're still trying to stop them for 10 yards. Don't panic. They get a couple first downs, don't panic, okay? Play good red zone defense. Play good third down defense, okay? Um, you know, don't, you, that's a mentality I think you got to teach the kid. Uh, you're going to give up, you play a spread team, you're going to give up some yards. Don't worry about it, okay? Make the next, line up, make the next play, okay? Um, force turnovers. You know, that, that we work hard on strip drills and a turnover circuit that I'm going to go over here in a little bit. Uh, mix up rushes. We got to have, we got to be able to rush three. We got to be able to rush four, five man, you know, zone blitz if we can. If we, if we think we can handle all this mentally. Now, we don't have to have five zone blitzes. We might have one, you know, or maybe two, you know. Uh, and usually it's with the same coverage. You know, we don't, we don't like have f four different zone blitzes with four different coverages. We probably need to take one or two zone blitzes with one coverage, okay? All right. Um, and then a six and you know six or seven man blitz with some with some zero cut with zero coverage. All right. And we do some things there. Practice schedule. Uh, this is uh, this is handwritten. This is that's, this is our, my practice schedule from from uh, one of our weeks. Uh, it's a Monday. We normally start practice at four ten. All right, if you see up there in that, uh, I can't point, I don't have a thing here. But up at the top left-hand corner, up near the top says, specially on, specially on field at 410. That's where we're getting there. We get pretty much everybody out there. You're either a punt returner, a kick returner, a long snapper, you know, a holder, a punter. If you're not, you're a lineman, then you go with your position and work individual skills. Quarterback's out there taking snaps. We got about 15 minutes we work on that. And that's where I work with them linebackers while I'm catching the football. They all become long snappers. Okay, and they're they're working on catching the football. We do that for about 15 minutes. Uh, uh, we start at 4:20 at right there, over on the left hand column. 4:25. We're normally starting pre-practice. Okay, uh, we get now everybody's going to extra uh, follow across the line. We're going extra point and field goal block. We put the all, extra point and field goal team out there, extra point and field goal block, and we go. It's not live. It's about three quarter speed. Okay. We're, try, we're trying not to kill each other. We're working on, hey, responsibilities. We don't want to, obviously, we don't want to be running in their own kicker and breaking his ankle and uh, all that stuff. So we're going about three-quarter speed. Don't leave your feet. You're, you're trying to block it. Don't leave your feet. You know, just bend at the waist. And you can block it, block it. But don't go leaving your feet and hitting the holder and breaking his arm or something like that. Okay. Um, 
okay? And we go about three to five minutes, extra point field goal. Then we normally going to work two special teams. Like I put on this particular day, we're working kickoff and kickoff return. Okay, and we don't work them together. We work kickoff for about five, seven minutes. We work kickoff return for about five, seven minutes. And then we go, we go on. We go from there. We, offense is going, splitting up and going to that noose, pat, and go drill. Okay, we go to tackle circuit. Our tackle circuit looks like this. We're doing these drills, these four drills. Okay, if you just look at it, say here's the field, here's the end zone down here. All right, down in this corner, I'm working. I take all the linebackers, okay, and we're working an angle tackle. Okay, we're working angle tackle. We go, you know, ball carrier coming here. We're about five yard. We're five yards apart. Okay, we're going angle tackle. We're working on clubbing. When we teach angle tackling, you know, we're hips down. We're going to club our arms, wrap and grab, run our feet. We're going to drive them back. Okay, just head across. You know, normal angle tackle. Okay, all right. We're working on that for about. We're going as many reps as we can get. Okay, we go through one time to the left, one time to the right, and if we got time. I'm, you know, two minutes I'm rolled up, we'll go back to the left. We'll get as many reps as we can for two minutes, okay? Over here, uh, we've got a strip drill, okay? We're going to work, put the balls on us, put, put the lines on the sideline, you know, and we're going to work down the line, and we're going to work strip drill. On the back, club, punching up, okay? Strip, we're just going to work a strip drill, okay? Over here, this, this is an empty station right now at the first two minutes, all right? Over here, the DB coach, this is our outside linebacker coach. He's here. All right? Over here, we've got the, the defensive back coach, and he takes the DBs, and they're working two-on-one -on -one tackle. Ball carrier, they're about seven, five, seven yards apart. Ball carrier is trying to split this here. Okay? We're two t uh, you, two, you two here are tackling me inside shoulder. I'm going to run forward. We're, gonna te we're teaching that leverage. Keep, take, keep a half a man. Don't get head up. Don't block him. Stay in here. Stay here. Okay? You know, get that stick to shoulder and wrap and grab. Let's drop, pick him up and drive him back. Okay? We're going we're gonna to close to it. All right? <clears throat> Over here, the fourth station, our D-line coach run that, and they're working a shimmy tackle. We normally put some boards down here, or they might just do it on a yard line. And what, what, the, what are you talking about shimmy tackle? We're, we're apart here. I mean, there's, no, there's, there's a man here. Okay, about five, six yards away, and I'm going to start closing. And then when I get when they're about three, four yards, I'm going to drop my hips, spread my feet out, and start. I can't do it. I'll knock the stage over. All right, just a quick, you know, shimmy right on up to them, club my arms. Okay, and it's a simulating a one-on-one -on -one open field type tackle. Okay, but we're talking with them about shimmying down. We're going to spread our feet out, and the closer I get to you, the wider my feet you get. I should get flat-footed almost and be pounding my feet. Okay, because I want balance to be able to go right and left. Now, we, we just club up, okay, and work that there. And we go about two minutes at each stage, then we rotate. Players rotate. Coaches stay still. Okay? So we're, we're, it takes us about ten minutes to do this. During this, what the offense is going noose, pat, and go, we're going tackle circuit. Okay, and we got one strip drill in there. Other day, we'll do a team tackle. Okay, like on Monday, we'll do tackle circuit. On on Tuesday, we do a team tackle. Put all the DB on the sideline, all the DBs over here, all the linebackers there, all the D linemen there. Okay, and then we'll work things like angle tackle. We'll work shimmy on the line. We'll work an open field tackle where they get, you know, apart here and close and work an open field tackle. Maybe it'd be like from the hash. I'm closing as fast as I can. I'm breaking down, and now you got one move, and we're, we're sliding and tackling. An open field tackle, all right? And it's almost the same tackling, but it's a different, for me, it's just mentally it's different for the kids. Oh, we're not tackling circuit again today. You know, well, on Monday and sometimes, you know, we, don't, we always don't do tackle circuit necessarily on Monday because they, so they're not going, oh, Monday, tackle circuit. Huh. You know, try and keep it up. And all of a sudden, hey, on tackle circuit, D-line coach say, coach, hey, how about today? I'm going to do this as my second tackle or third tackle a goal line type tackle or something else. Sure, okay, but we're going to work on tackling right there for, for 10 minutes every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, okay, in practice.
All right, we're going we're gonna to work on that. Uh, from there, we go... From there, we go into individual periods. Our, our period blocks are, we're still in pre-practice. We ain't even started the clock yet. Okay, this is all pre-practice. Right? But we now start period one. We've got a clock that, you know, uh, a lot of you guys probably have, a uh, clock that, that runs down every five minutes and it'll show the period. All right? But period one, we're working individual. I'm not going to go through every individual drill that we do there, but we're working on keys and drops and, you know, hand, shoulder forearm, hand shiver, ripping with linebackers. DBs are working on ball drills and formation recognition, man-to-man -man technique on this particular day. We take about a five-minute break. Then we go to over here, you can see it's seven periods, seven, eight, and nine. We go to crossover. All right, for 15 minutes, we are going to take every kid that we think can play the other side of the football and send them there. Okay, so all those guys that are on offense, if we think they can help us on defense, we're bringing them over for 15 minutes. Everybody at the offensive coaches think they can help them on, 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 on any, any defense player they think they can help them on offense, we send them on over. And we're not teaching a lot of fundamentals during that time. Okay, we are teaching scheme. Okay, like for instance, this day, all we did, with we, we, we took the defensive line, the inside and outside linebackers, and we worked on front review. Okay, because our attitude is, is that we got to make, I don't care if the kid, you know, has perfect hand technique, I just got to know he knows what to do, where to go, where to line up and dip and rip, or, or what's his response, gap responsibility or his blitz responsibility. So we're going to take 15 minutes and we're going to make sure that kid, because he's a pretty good athlete anyway, okay? And, and we've already in the summer and in spring practice, and uh, we've gone, we've, we, we play both, we work both sides of the ball. We split the practice in half. Half is offense, half is defense. We do half, you know, we switch everybody. So we've already got a foundation of that. But this is in season, so we're, we're now just re reminding these kids, hey, here's your responsibility. Here's your responsibility on defense. We're going over front. The secondary is going to work on coverage review and, and, and uh, in coverage review, meaning responsibilities in the zone or man, and then alignments to formations and check. And they're not working on backpedaling technique, none of that stuff. They're working on assignment. It's all mental, okay, so we know what we're doing. Then after that, we go into instant. We, we send We take the defensive line and linebackers, and we're going to go inside drill for 10 minutes against the opponent, our opponent. Send the defensive backs and the younger linebackers, Pascal versus the offense. And our defensive backs and Pascal and our, our linebacker, a younger linebacker is going to work against our, our first offense in Pascal. Uh, they're going to run their routes, and, you know, normally spread, you're going to see certain covers. So we're working on our coverages, basically, okay? So they get an opportunity working on our coverage, all right? Uh, and inside drill, we're going to, you know, we might, if we're playing a wing T team, we might have, we might have all 11 guys there on okay, inside drill, okay? And then now send just all the young DBs and linebackers to, to, uh, uh, to pass scale. All right, 10 minutes we switch. We then send the defensive line to pass rush, and uh, the defense, the linebackers and DBs are now going to go pass scale versus the opponent. I draw cards. We get two groups, uh, the younger guys, offensive guys, and they're going to run plays just coming at us. Okay, no balls. Well, I have the quarterback hold the ball, but I don't let him throw it. I'm wasting time because all we're looking at is uh, I'm not worried about you know does he defend the ball. We do that in individual drills. All I'm worried about is we got everybody covered. Route recognition, run the routes. Fellas, run the routes. Run the routes as fast as you can, you know, and then are we covering everybody up? And we just feel it saves time. You know, I'm chasing footballs. More than likely, the kid that's the, the quarterback ain't going to throw it worth a crap anyway, so why bother? Okay? You know, why bother throwing it? Unless you're going to say, well, we'll put our starting quarterback in there and he'll throw the football. But even then, you know, I, I'd rather just not throw the football. Are we covering guys? Are we covering up properly? Okay, we got a response. No, nope, run it again. We're going to run it again. Okay, let's run through it. Let's make sure everybody knows what we're doing. Or we might say, okay, we're going to run this cut first play. We're going to run this coverage. Run it again. Here, we're going to run it against this blitz or coverage. Here's how we'd match up. All right? So we do that about 10 minutes. We take another break. Then we go to sprint. We go to, we go the whole team. 
11 on 11. Oh, that was a minute. There's a lot of guys standing around. Well, the way we're doing it, what we do is we put the first offense out there versus the first defense, and we're offense, it's an offensive period, okay? I mean, they consider an offensive period, but we're considering a defensive period, okay? We're coaching them up. You know, here's where I go back into, that, you know, getting right behind them and coaching them up, okay? They're running their screens. We rotate every three to four plays on defense, all right? First group out there. Three play. We don't tell them it's screen drill. We just say 11 on 11. We're run, they're running screens and maybe, you know, some trick plays off of that. You know, Fox, the Fox play where, you know, fake the, fake the bubble and the two guy goes up the sideline or, or, you know, fake the fast screen and throw the, throw the seam route or just, just to kind of keep us honest. Maybe run the draw, okay? But we go full speed, 11 on 11. We rotate our every three or four plays, and, of course, they're just coming at us, play after play after play. And it's a great time for us. At first, the only reason we did it was because, hey, that's a good pursuit drill time for us. You want to throw this ball all the way out there? Our guys will run out there and we'll work on pursuit. But that was like five, four or five years ago. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're starting to get pretty good at playing against screens. And now we're not having to do screens in team. You know, when we go to our defensive period team, we're not having to work on defending screens, which the scout team usually can't run any good anyway. Okay? Because they're running, you know, but my attitude is, is if you get, you're, you're defending the screen is just a mentality. You know, reading blocks up front, you know, as a defensive lineman, hey, man, I just went, I'm not that good. I just went by that guy like nothing. Plant, 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 and redirect to where the quarterback's eyes are. All right, retrace your steps. Okay? Linebacker, reading releases. You know, secondary guys, reading your responsibility. Okay? Uh, for us, when we're... In our cover two, uh, we play like a two soft, and I'm going to go through that, but I don't get through all these practice schedules and all that. But when we're playing, when we're playing you here, when we're playing this drill here, all right, we're working on pursuit lanes and angles because all the screen is is a sweep. Okay, if they're running fast screen, okay. Who's the contained player, all right? Who's the fill players, all right? And who's the over-the-top guy? That's it, all right? It's just pursuit, you know? He's here for this. He's playing and coming up. Let's go get it, you know? Don't let him block you. Go get it. Attack inside out. Two on one tackle on field. Per angle tackle, pursuit, okay? But we're just working on angles. And we're coaching pursuit, and we're coaching angles. You know, we're coaching hustle, number one. But number two, we're coaching, we're co coaching angles. Don't do this. Don't get on top of him. You know, and you're getting rep after rep after rep, and they finally understand, hey, go under blocks. Don't go on top of them because then you get washed. Okay? But, you know, if you see it one or two times, they're not going to get real good at it. You see 10 minutes a day, them running as many screens as they can in 10 minutes, you're going to pr get pretty good at it, okay, or at least better than you would be, okay? So we're working screens, and we're just rotating kids in every three to four plays. And we just, you know, first group, they know. I mean, linebackers, I don't even call it first group, second group, third group. I just say after, three, after four plays, you two guys get in. If they're, like, standing around, they ain't going to play because I don't really usually tell who's the second, first team, the second team, and the third team. They usually figure it out for themselves. Because usually, the linebacker anyway, if I'm the best one, I'm getting out there. If somebody else gets out there with me, I'll throw his ass off the field. That's what I'm trying to develop with kids anyway. Kids that want to be out there. Well, you enough, if, if, if you're one of those guys, well, I don't want to practice, I'm going to let Johnny get all the practice, and I'm going to stand over and watch, well, then you ain't going to play. Okay, I don't, I've never put a depth chart, hey, your first team, your second team, your third team. They figure, they, they work it out for themselves. Because I want the toughest SOB out there anyway, and he's going to throw the other guy off the field. Okay? Th that's, that's the way I look at it. All right? Uh, but we're working at screen drill for 10 minutes. We write that transition right in. All of a sudden, the coach go, pop! And I know it's passed under pressure. We're just going to start bringing blitzes at him. And we're going to run all blitzes. 
Now, every once in a while, he's going to face a 4-3 team. He says, hey, coach, can you slide? Give us a 4-3 a look and run your blitzes. Sure, no problem. We just call over, right, and we run a blitz from, that, from an over alignment, okay? And then every once in a while, we'll sneak it. Most of the time, we'll run with the younger guys. We'll run the over, the 4-3 blitzes, and we'll go right back to our 3-4 stuff with the older guys. And we're getting now practice on blitz technique because I've never really figured out how to work blitz, teach blitz technique in an uh, individual drill. I, I've never figured that out, how to really, because they're, they're, they're not going to, they're just not going to do it as well. Okay? Plus, my best linebacker is going to have to go against one of my lesser linebackers, and all this best linebacker is going to do is murder that lesser linebacker, and now he thinks that technique's good. Now, that ain't good if it's against a good player. You're just beating up a ninth grader there. Okay, now all of a sudden, he's using his blitz technique. We're figuring out blitz technique that he needs to use, dipping and ripping, you know, whatever he's going to be using in a particular blitz against our first group. And it's full go, full speed, go get the quarterback, just don't hit him. Okay? Uh, I mean, we're, we're bringing pressure. All, all our, and we don't run a lot of blitzes. We, get, we try to get good at about three. Okay? Uh, and then, you know, there's some games we might just say two. We're going to get good at two, all right? But we're going to run, we're going to run three. You want to run those blitzes at them over and over again? We'll run, and, we'll, and now in the secondary, we're working on our zero coverage. And so, again, we're going, I mean, you know, you go individual drill, zero coverage. More than likely, that guy, you're not getting a lot of reps, number one, and your backup DBs are running the routes, and they're not real good, and you don't know if it's any good. You know, and you as a coach, you got to throw the football, and, you're more worried about throwing it than you are coaching. Now you're standing there coaching them up. You know, you're standing there coaching them against the best wide receiver against our best quarterback. And, and that technique don't work. you got to do this. And you got to coach it on the run. Okay? But we're getting as many as we can. We'll run, we'll run all our zero blitzes, and we'll run the one or two zone blitzes. And then we'll, just to dink with them a little bit, we'll run some of our twists, uh, some of our stunts. Okay, that we're going to use. All right, um, we do that for ten minutes. Then this particular day, we only went five, uh, and then we got out of there. But a lot of times, we're, especially early in the season, we're going to go ten, and it's runs, and all that offense is doing is, is running the football. And this again is where we're going to get good at stopping the run. I mean, and it's a dang, it's a, it's a it's a full speed. You come and block our ass. We're getting off. You know. Don't take the back to the ground, okay? Hit them, butt them up. You know, if he falls down, it's okay. Don't tackle him on the legs, you know. But let's, we're going to get after it, and they're going to get after us. Don't hit the quarterback. If we run the option, you know, if, if we're on speed option and he turns it up, do not hit the dang quarterback. Plus, I'm blowing a whistle. He, he's running the football. Anytime we're getting pressure on the quarterback, he starts scrambling, I'm blowing the whistle anyway because I don't want to get him hurt, okay? I blow the whistle faster than the offensive coaches. So most of them don't even come out with it. Okay, all right, but I'm going to protect our quarterback, okay? Um, but we're going to run for those. This particular day went five minutes, but normally we go ten uh, of just runs, and they're going to run whatever. I don't care what they're running at us, okay, because my defensive end, you know, this guy here, he doesn't know if it's, you know, power. or All he knows is he's getting reach block, base block, turned out, inside release, and trap. And that's all I'm worried about is scheme. Okay? I'm worried about those three or four schemes. Reach, can he play the reach block? Can he play the base block? Can he, can he play the trap? Okay? And I don't care who gets the ball back here. I don't care if the running back's running or the quarterback's running. It's the same thing for him. Just get off the block and tackle the guy with the brown thing. Okay? I don't care who he is. All right? The nose, you're looking at double teams and scoops. I don't care what kind of plays they are. All right? He's either getting double teamed or he's getting scooped. Reached or scooped, and, that, and that's it. And we're just getting repetitions of playing. And but now we're going against, we're going against the best center we got and the best guard we got. All right, and we just keep rotating those kids now. And we we try to match it up with the first are going against first, and the seconds are going against seconds, and the thirds. Are, I let the offensive coaches worry about that more usually. Okay, I, I don't worry about it too much. All of a sudden, well, our first group is in there against their third group. They usually run one play. And Coach Miller's like, first group back in because we're kicking the crap out of them young kids. 
okay? But I'm going to get my, we're staying on our rotation. Every three plays rotate. Every three or four plays rotate. Okay? And we get a lot of repetitions in that 30-minute screen, pup, and then runs. We, you know, and they're just coming at it because going back to, you get good at playing defense by getting repetitions, not staying around talking about it. Okay? Um, and then we break off. And we take our top 18 players or so defensively, and we're going to go team deep the other end of the field. And then we take the scout team. They usually give us about 12 guys, okay, you know, maybe 13. And, and, uh, and we run now the opponent's, uh, opponent plays. We go for 25 minutes, maybe 30. You know, in this particular day, we went 30. That's why I bought the extra five minutes. All right. Uh, so we're going normally during this first period, 20, 21, 22, and 23, we're going, you know, first and, first and 10 stuff, you know, some third and long stuff. We're just mixing it up, okay? Then we go five minutes of straight short yardage. As many plays we can get, they run, and then five minutes of goal line. All right? And then that's our script. I'm about the only guy that can read it, okay? But we just, this is a Wednesday. We're now... Instead of going 20 minutes of plays, five minutes of short yards, four minutes of goal line, we're going, okay, I'll call it down, down in distance. First and 10, put the ball in the right hash. We're in field stuff, three strong. I'm going to get end over. You know, off the card I drew is an end over. You know, it's power left. And the adjustment we ought to be running is check roll. Now, you guys probably can't read any of that because I just scribble, okay? But I'm the only guy that re needs to read this, okay? I don't have it typed out or anything. Next, play two, second and eight. Middle of the field, strong skin, eight cloud. Okay, we're going to cover eight, and we're clouding it side. Uh, for offensive formations, twins, you know, I, I know what we're going to see. Okay, and now we're just going down in distance. First and ten, second and eight, third and eight, set, third and two. You know, first and ten, second and six, and right on down. Then we get through those 24 plays as fast as we can. If we can go back and get a few that we, you know, a few in, more, we will. Then we go goal line, we get our six, seven, eight plays of goal line, whatever it happened to be that day, and we're, and we're done. That's 30 minutes. That's 25, 30 minutes. Okay? Um, and that's what we're looking like, you know, there. Our scheme rules. I'm going to get a little bit of what we're doing. I probably said, man, that took forever for him to get to what we're doing. Okay? Uh, our scheme rules. We're going to give a, we're going to give a strength call, okay, meaning like, like strong would be the two or more receiver side. So we call strong, we're saying find two receiver side. That's the strength. Okay? If there's two on each side, then we say away from the back. Well, why away from the back, coach? Because if they're running the zone, we're going to call a strength over here. If they're running the zone, it's there. Well, what if they're in a pistol? Well, then call the strength to the left because most teams are right-handed. Okay? That, that's what we're normally doing. All right? If we call weak, then it's just the opposite, the one receiver side. All right? Tight, of course, the spread team, we're not, right now we're not seeing a tight end. Tight means the tight end is the strength. Okay? And that open, away from the tight end. If they're a tight end offense, now we're going the open end side of the field. Anytime the ball's on a hash, we're pretty much calling, we're saying the wide side of the field's the strength. Okay? I mean, we're like, it's like 95%. If the ball is on or near the hash. Okay? And what do you mean near? Within a couple, two or three yards. Yeah, two yards. Okay? And I tell the kids, you know, if, if we're wrong, don't worry about it. It'll all work out. Okay? But we, we'll, we'll say the field is the strength. The boundary Star is something we, we use very seldomly, and maybe a star player. Maybe we want to, you know, maybe they flop the line and it's that tackle. We know they're going out to that behind that tackle. We, we don't use that that much, but we've got it. Balanced is mean, double means it's balanced. We don't care what the formation is unless it's end over. We're, we're, bringing, we're doing the same thing on both sides, okay? And that'll make sense as I get into some of this stuff. All right, so the first thing I'm going to call. Okay, we call the direction first. It'll be like strong field, all right? Then the front, say skin. Skin is a slant for us. And then the covers, read. Read is like a, a cover two read or two soft, some people say, all right? 
uh, fronts. I'm going to go through some fronts here real quick. All right. Normally, our number one front versus a spread team is what we call skin. Okay, it's strong skin. All right, strong skin. So we're saying strongest to the two receiver side away from here, the ace. So the two receiver side away from the back. Okay, or it could be field if it was on a hat. And all we're doing is we're taking this, we're all head up. We're going to take this strong side in, and he's going to do what we call rock to a five. And so he's lining up head up, but on the snap of the football, he's attacking the outside shoulder pad number, you know, and, and he's a C-gap player. And he's going through his normal reads. If he gets reach block, he's got to fight down the line of scrimmage and fight to the football. If he gets inside release, he's got to close back down and play trap. Okay? Our, our, uh, our nose is trying to get in the gap in the strong side A gap, okay? So he's not trying to get on that show. He is dipping and ripping and getting into that gap, okay? We're trying to get him, we're trying to get him side to side. If that's the center, I want to get here, okay? I want to get right there. I want to get in the gap, okay? Our backside in is going to do the same thing but to the B gap, okay? He's getting in the gap, all right? Our Mike and our Will, Mike is outside shoulder to guard, and they're in what I call a read technique, all right? And read technique, I mean, anytime I'm a read technique, I'm just reading, I'm reading. In this case, we're going to read the back. He goes this way. We're taking three shuffle steps, one, two, three, all right, three straight steps, and we're just reading, we're reading what's happening. Now seeing the blockage. I'm here, one, two, three, all right? What's open up? Daylight, I fill it. Dark, I'm going to scrape. What, what are you talking about there? Daylight, if this opens up, I'm filling it, okay? If it closes down and it's dark, I'm going to scrape off his hip. The backside linebacker, the Will, he's fitting down in here. He's going to play the backside A gap or make the nose right, okay? So what do you mean to make the nose right? Well, if the nose don't get in that gap and he's reach blocked and he's in a backside A gap, don't you get in the backside A gap. You play the front side A gap. You play daylight. Make the nose guard right. Okay? All right. Our outside backers. All right. Our outside backers, that, that same normal alignment we talked about, if it's a, a flex to Y, we're going to be inside shoulder and four to five. We're going to be an apex. We're going to apex a wider receiver. We're going to a number two. We're going to apex him. Okay? They're doing those reach steps. Okay? The strong side outside linebacker is a drop player if it's passed when we run strong skin. And then the coverage we'll run with that normally is read. Okay? Strong skin. Oh, I rewrote strong right there. Strong skin and read. Some people like to read. Some people call it talk to sync. I'm going to go over all that coverage responsibility here in a coverage section. But right now I'm working on fronts. What we've got to give is between... Between, so he's a drop player if it's pass. All right. If it's run to him, he's got to attack outside shoulder of that of that Y. That's his gap right there. Because I got the end in this gap. Okay. All right. Flow this way. He's shuffle reading, and he's going to attack back towards the line of scrimmage, and he's playing the zone key. Okay. If it's pass, of course, before this is all but now before the snap, we're giving a you or me call. All that means is if I say if I'm the in, I'm the will and you're the you're the right the weak side outside linebacker and I say you, that means if it's pass, you rushing. Okay, and I'm going to drop and play this curl. Okay, if I say me, that means. I'm rush, if it's pass, I'm going to be the rush contain guy, and he's the curl player. All right, so it's just a you, me. It's between them. And we try to come up with some rules. Okay, well, when do you want to do it? Well, if the ball's in the middle of the field, and they got two wide outs out here, I probably don't want to bring him because it's a long way for him to go. Okay, to cover the curl. All right? If the ball's on a hash, you could probably get away with it. Okay, how much are they throwing the football? Just a lot of things. And I try to let them 
you know, I give them enough freedom and I tell them, hey, you guys, here's the parameters I'm giving you. If it's a tight end, you probably want the outside linebacker to come and you can drop because he's close to you. If it's a wide out, you probably want to drop and he wants the I mean, excuse me, you want him dropping and you coming, okay? All right? But I let him play with it a little bit. And here's the key. If we ain't getting hurt, I ain't yelling at him. Well, hip, why did you have him come and you drop? Well, coach, he didn't catch the ball. I defended it. I broke the play up. I don't want the kid telling me that and me look stupid. Okay? He made the play. Obviously, I gave him, a, I gave him some parameters. I gave him some leeway. If he can get out here and cover that guy, then get out there and cover that guy. Because really, that's the guy I want coming. Okay? Because he's going to be up off the field, of, off the edge pretty fast. Okay? This, it's almost like a, it's a delay rush. Contained. We're not going to get a lot out of that guy unless the, it's just great. Co we might get a coverage sack out of him. Okay? The only reason we're bringing him is because we need a contained rush so we get dropped back and he can, we don't get this and him out of the pocket. Okay? But I really want to bring him if I can. But, I, but if he's way out here wide, I, I don't want him to have to drop all the way. So I, that's why we go with the you or me. Because I don't know what formation they're going to be in for sure. Okay? So if we call strong skin, read, there's a, there's a you, me, and I, I, you can't really see it because it's small right now. There's a you and me call between a will and a weak side outside backer. All right? And all responsibilities there. We're playing, normally we're going to play a cover two behind it or quarters or a combination of it. Okay? I, we, we just started putting quarters in this year, so we're not really good at it. So I'm not going to talk about quarters. Okay? We're getting better at it, okay? Uh, uh, but, but two, where we come right now, we're, we're good at cover two and the, and, and the things that we do with it. I mean, we're real good at it, okay? Uh, but that we better be because that's our number one coverage, all right? We would practice quarters coverage, what we call cover eight, but we very seldom ran in it. We didn't run in the game very much. But we're getting better at it, and then hopefully we'll be better at it next year, and and then when we get to the point where we feel good about it, and we'll call it in the game. But we got to practice it. And the boy said, Coach, if you ain't going to call it in the game, why are you practice? Well, we ain't never going to get good at it if we don't practice it. Okay? Uh, so so that's, that's the first front that we put in. We put in strong skin. Okay? All right? Uh, option responsibilities. You know, and of course, you know, I, I've always felt because coming from a time where you saw a lot of options, you better have, you better know who's got the dive. Well, in this case, there is, you know, I mean, who's got the dive, who's got the quarterback, who's got the pitch. Because you can see some teams that are going to do, give you this. Say, put it here, motion here, and they're going to give you some type of, they can give you a dive option out of it. You know, who's got the dive? Well, you get it. Our rules are he inside releases, you play. Squeeze and play the first thing that shows. If it's a trap, it's a trap. If it's a dive, tackle the dive. Okay? All right? Linebacker's going to scrape. All right? If it's a bounce play or an option, you're the, you're the C-gap player. All right? Be the C-gap player. You've got quarterback. You're, because we're in a cover two, he's the pitch player, so you're an extra player. You're quarterback to pitch, but you're outside quarterback. Okay. He's the inside quarterback player, meaning inside out angle tackle. He's the outside in quarterback player, meaning he's got to defeat this block out here. So if it got, if it bounced further, we ought to be chasing here. Actually, we ought to be running through, but let's say, you know, we ought to be running through here. All right. But we would be chasing here and here. And we kind of, we are again, two on one more corralling. And we got him on the pitch and we got him on the, the safety on the pitch pass. Okay. And if you can if you can do that, if you if you give them responsibilities based on this side, it's no problem. If they reach you, if they reach you, he's stepping out there, he's fighting a C gap. He becomes a C gap, he don't know it, quarterback player. He knows he's a C gap player. He don't know he's the quarterback player because he don't know it's option. Okay? All right? He becomes the dive player. Because it's daylight, he's filling. Okay? He's now they gotta do one of two things. They double here, that means you're by yourself. You're gonna hit the dive. If he's got it, take him down. If he don't have it, bounce off of him and play help out. 
inside out on the quarterback. Okay? If they base block you, well, then that dang nose is better make the play on the dive. He's got the A gap. You fill the, you fill the B gap. Show the four on that guard. Sit in the B gap. All right? Fill the B gap. One of two ways. Okay? Fill it all right, by defeating the block or fill it by laying your skinny, sorry little butt in the hole and make him bounce it or cut it back. Okay? But don't get widened out. Of, a lot of times you get linebackers and they get this big guard coming out. They want to start drifting and then they get washed out here. Hey, that's the worst thing that can happen. You're up in here. If you're down low, hit the guy in the knee pad or in the thigh pad. Get down low. Make a pile at least. Now, I don't want him on the ground. Okay? Linebackers don't make plays on the ground. But at least he's in his hole. He's in his gap. They ain't running my gap. That's got to be your attitude. And sometimes, like this year, we play with a Mike that was 175 pounds. He's a 10th grader. He's a ball player. But he's only 170. He's a 10th grader. He's only 175 pounds. But he made 120 tackles because he's going to play downhill and fill gap. All right? And he was a good tackler in space. All right? Um, and he didn't even play in the first two games because he had, he had arthroscopic surgery. So he played, what, we played 14 games. He played in 12 of them. He had 140 tackles or whatever it was, 130-something. I don't know what it was. But he's, he's a ball player at 100, uh, Mike Linebacker, 175 pounds, 5'10 or 11, okay? But, you know, he understood leverage, 230, you know, fit my gap or scrape. Uh, I can't take things on head up and, you know, try and play two gaps. Take care of your gap, okay? All right, same thing with his nose. Take care of your gap in skin. All right? Next front. Well, yeah, yeah, next front. Base. We, in the past, haven't done a lot of this. We call it double base. All right, and we're probably playing read behind that. All right. got strong left. Right now, both our ends are what we call stuff technique on the tackle. All right, they're a B gap type player. They're not stepping in the B gap. They're just, that's their gap. Okay, they're going to attack, they're going to attack the tackle based on what he does. So if he gets an inside release, we're going to get a little better squeeze. It's a little better to play the trap with this than us when we're rocking to a five. Okay. You know, if you're running the football inside the tackles, that's probably the first thing we do. We go from skinning it to going to stuff, to, uh, double, to base. We call it double base. We're doing the same thing on both sides. Bo double base, both, si both outside linebackers are drop players if it's pass. Okay? If it's pass, they're, they're playing coverage, it's called. More than likely, it's, it's cover two. Okay, once we get good at, once we get it good at quarters, there'll be some quarters with it. Okay? Uh, and then normally what we're doing with that is we're adding a word spy. And he becomes a spy player if it's pass to give us our fourth rusher. Okay? So we're going to go. And, and now if it is pass, we're stuffing here. We see pass set. We're going to become an outside rush player. He's working one side or the other, and then he becomes a spy. If it's, you know, if it's... Uh, if it's run, I'm just doing my normal reads. Inside release, I squeeze down. Base blocks, I'm fighting pressure. All right? If I'm not sure where to get what play, where to, if it's an insider, I'm, I'm going to make sure I take care of that B gap, fill it up, and let the linebacker scrape. Okay? I'm going to let this, no, uh, this Will linebacker, he's stuffing the center. I, here's where I really got to make this, the nose right because he's reading the, he's reading the center. Okay? He's, he's not really two gapping. Okay, but he's kind of using a two-gap technique. We tell the nose, you've got the play side A gap. So that means if he steps this way, you've got that gap. If he steps that way, you've got that gap. Okay? Fill the gap. All right? Um, and then that, the backside linebacker, okay, if say flows this way, he's got to fill daylight. He's got to fit downhill. Okay, we, we don't. We don't play flat. We're going to play down. That's why I got him at five. We're going to play downhill, and we're now going to play the front side of the back side of the gap, depending on making the nose guard right. Okay? And then our normal option rules would, would, would stick. You know, he released inside. I'm squeezing, playing a dive, scraping a quarterback, 
slow play quarter, uh, inside quarterback run through, outside quarterback slow play to pitch, and then the coverage is secondary, depending on what coverage we're in, would have the, would have the pitch. If we're in two, it would be the corner. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. We, we try, what we're trying to teach him, he, we want to get, if he's stepping inside hard, we want to get our hands and shoulder on him. We want to get a body on him. All right. Now my head's probably, if it's a true veer block. He's not trying to, my, my head's, you know, down in here on his hip, and I'm just squeezing it on down, and I'm looking through his hip to the, into the backfield. What's coming? Is it the fullback? Is it the backside guard, the backside tackle? What is it? Just, just look through here, and let's see what's coming. Uh, it happens a lot faster than that, but but you know that's you know chalk talk. When you right, well, yeah, we wrong arm everything right now. Yeah, we wrong arm everything. Okay, because what what our you know our thought is right now, you know if if we squeeze down, you know and and we're not teaching him a wrong arm the trap. I mean it happens so, but we want him to get his head across on a tackle. I mean, sometimes you don't know if the guy, if that's a guard, a fullback. You know, you guys that play defensive line, you understand that you're just hitting whatever shows up. And what we're trying to do is we're basically just hit whatever shows up with your outside shoulder. If it's a guard, you're, it's a call the wrong arm. If it's a fullback or a back, it's a tackle. But it's, you know, one, we're doing this. We realize he don't have the ball. We're here and then punching through. Or he's got the ball. We're here and grappling up. And I'm not, I hate to make it sound as simple as that, but, but I'm not, we're trying to make it repetition over and over and over again, the same thing. We don't sometimes, you know, well, hey, you know, even like, that's why even if, if we're skinning outside, we're telling the guy to squeeze back down and wrong arm it. You know, because we don't want him to say, well, this time, I thought, coach, I was supposed to. We're going to wrong arm it. You know, we're going to wrong arm it over and over and over again. If we lose, if they give us some type of play action pass, boot, the linebackers just got to spy and go get them. Okay? Yeah, anything else? Or I good? Okay. So that's double base. We'll run that some. That's not a big front for us. We'll run that once in a while. All right? Double okey. Double okey. Same alignment. Normally we're head up. Okay? We might give a wide call in this. If we call double, like third and real long or whatever, you know, real long. Double okey wide. All that means is we want the ends now to widen out. Instead of being head up in a four technique, we're going to have him widen out to a, a five plus. You know, he's going to be outside. He's going to be no part of his body touching the tackle. And we want him getting upfield. Okay? But we'll give, we'll call double okey. Spy. Oop. Spy just means now, you know, we're here. All right, he, the will's the spy, and whatever the technique of the spy is that week. Is he spying a quarterback? What type of spy is he? Is he, you know, he's chasing a really, really good athlete, so he better really spy him, you know, like that there. Or is he kind of a, we just want to get a guy into the rush lane, an extra guy into the rush lane when he reads pass, and now we tell the nose, hey, if, if he says, I'm the spy, if it's strong, it's double left. We know the mic's left. We know the will's right. We tell the nose, you go to the side away from the double team. So attack, attack the center, and all of a sudden you get double team here. You go this way. And the will will now spy here. If you get double team from this side, go here, and now the will will spy around that way. Okay, so it's again, it's getting that... Will you make the nose guard right? Okay, and I think that for us it worked pretty good because you know sometimes you're sitting there going, well, how are they going to protect it? Well, they don't protect it the same all the time, and so you're kind of you're kind of it's almost like a read stunt where you're trying to get your nose and Will linebacker to read the blocking scheme and then go away from it. Okay, so you got a double team here. He goes this way. Again, all you're trying to do is get the will, the linebacker matched up on the back. Okay. 
And like I said, also we'll run a little bit. Of, we didn't run a lot of it this year because we weren't real big at, at an inside linebacker. And I was, you know, at times worried about, you know, hey, it's third and 10 or 12. You might be able to just run the dang draw right up the pipe on us for 10 or 12 if, if, if we're too wide at that end spot. Where, where last year, the year before, man, I had a 6'3", 230-pound Mike linebacker who, playing, who started this year at Tennessee as a freshman. Uh, at Will Linebacker for him. So, I mean, heck, we could put everybody, we could put everybody out there, put A.J. in the middle, and ain't going to run up the middle. I mean, because, you know, he ain't nobody going to block him. Okay? So, it, it, personnel, you know, from year to year, you're going to do different things based on personnel. What can your kids do? What can't they do? That's more important. Okay? And then don't do it. If they can't do it, don't call it. Okay? Uh, let's see here. Double O, keep double O, keep sliding, double O. Yes, sir. Okay, all right, first key, and, and, and uh, my first key for, my, for the outside linebackers, we're going to read quarterback to back, okay? If I read run, you know, ball down the line, when I'm calling, of course, in a shotgun, it's, it's still all, it's run key, ball down the line. If it's flow to me, then I'm, then I'm a triggering and I'm attacking my gap. If it's away from me, I'm always settling back down in here, playing bootleg counter reverse, and, of course, the zone key. But I'm going to read quarterback, okay? I'm going to read quarterback to back. I've tried to do tackles, and I know some guys do tackles. I'm just not real good at coaching that. I mean, I'm not saying I'm right and they're wrong. I'm just saying I don't know how to do it, okay? So I've always taught it that way. Now, I mean, we'll see, you know, the tackle pass set, and, and you know, I mean, but, but I mean, we don't, we don't read that guy because I just I can't teach it very well. So, my bad. I'm just, you know, but um, – that, that's basically what we're doing there. And that's, that's, pretty, much a, that's pretty much our normal and, and all of these fronts that I'm going over, unless they're stunting. We try and keep it the same over and over again. Yes, sir? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and in the coverage we're in, for instance, and you know, that kind of gets back into that, if it's flow away from me, okay, if I'm this safety, and it's flow away from, I'm backpedaling, we're in cover two, all right, and I get, I see that, and that would be that read option too. I mean, if they're running re zone option, this guy's probably coming down and going to try and crack this outside backer. We're going to fit outside of him, okay? I mean, if we're, if we're getting, if we're getting a true counter play, like here, All right, our flows this way, our inside linebackers are going to step this way, okay? I mean, if they're running true counter, okay, where the back actually steps this way and that's give us run flow initially this way and coming back, that's the hardest one to run. I mean, if they're running and, and then they're doing this here, all right, that's the harder one to run. Now, if they're just doing this, it's counter blocking, but it's, it's power, really, Okay? So what we're going to do, if we get that, he's pulling, squeeze down. Work down the line of scrimmage. That's as much your play right there, backside end, as it is the front side ends. Because I'm not, a, I'm not worried, because I have this outside linebacker sitting right there going to protect me on bootleg counter reverse, which, you know, is counter away from me right now. Okay? But tackle pulling, I'm, if I stepped outside or stuffed him or went inside, whatever, don't make a difference, I'm down the line of scrimmage, working down in here, looking for that right there. And I can make, I mean, that's a, that's, a, that's a legitimate play that I can make for no gain with that end. Especially if you're in skin and you're skinning him inside. He ought to be down in here making it for a loss if he's good, if he's fast. 